Hey, what's up? I'm Sam Christie, and this is the Truth Time Tune Time podcast, a music opinion and advice podcast and video cast. We talk about our opinions. What am I listening to? What are you listening to? Any music news going on in the world out there? If you're an artist or a musician and you need advice on anything music industry related, touring, social media, songwriting, no question is too small. I work in the music tech industry and I've been in a few fairly successful bands, so I'd be happy to field your questions. And if I can't answer them, I can help you find the answer. And of course, we'll also sprinkle in some life lessons for you because that's just the kind of guy I am. Whatever. Okay. So, uh, episode one here. You're on the Sam with Glasses channel. That's me. When I play music, that's what I am. Sam with Glasses, the band, the brand, that's me. You know what I'm talking about? So what I want to talk about today is 2014 Grammy nominees. Some big news here. Some surprising, some not so surprising. And yes, I did read that intro right there. Just had to, just had to get it right, you know, for that episode one. You know, got to get it in there nice and smooth and slick, you know, make the people think I'm a professional when really I'm just in my apartment. Okay, so the Grammy nominees, here we go. Uh, if you want to follow along, I'm on the Billboard site with the, the full list here. Just checking this out. Uh, Album of the Year, Nominees, Blessed Unrest by Sarah Bareilles. By the way, this is not a news podcast. I'm just giving you a little background here because, uh, you know, I'm about to give you give you the lowdown. What I think, what do you think about these artists here and these nominees? Blessed Unrest, Sarah Bareilles. This is Album of the Year. Random Access Memories, Daft Punk. Good Kid, Mad City, Kendrick Lamar. The Heist, Macklemore and Ryan Lewis. Red, Taylor Swift, my girl Swifty. You know, from small town PA, but acting like she's from Nashville, that's fine. We'll let her we'll let her get away with it. I'm taking these off. This is a little too a little too hot for me. Okay. So uh the Blessed Unrest, I haven't heard this, but uh I've heard Brave the single because it's in that stupid I think it's a Windows phone commercial, which if you have a Windows phone, I mean, you know, Cerebral Borellis, you gotta make that money, you know, you gotta put your song in whatever you can. But uh if you have a Windows phone, you know, what are you doing? What are you doing here? We're an iPhone nation here. We're an Android nation. And you're trying to come in with this Windows phone? I mean, come on. Let's be real here. But uh, I'm kind of surprised at her. Not, I mean, she's a great songwriter, but I know, like, when she first came out, I thought that she was kind of going to be, like, a one-hit wonder kind of thing. She had, um, uh, she had King of Anything. That was her second single. What was the first one? And, uh... uh, I'm not going to write you a love song or love song, whatever that's called. And... Kind of surprised me, I guess, because both of those, I'm pretty sure that both of those, I know that the love song one was written, like her label came to her and said like, oh, we need like the single. And, uh, you know, she was like, oh, I'm not going to write you a love song because you asked for it because you need one, you see, you know? And then I'm guessing that the second single is a similar thing, Who Died a Major King of Everything, which is pretty cool. But, you know, I didn't expect her to have a lasting career. No offense to Sarah. I mean... It's good, good songs there, but, you know, kind of just one of those artists that kind of pops up now and again, and you're like, oh, yeah, I remember that. But, you know, underneath it, there's some good stuff there, so i got to give that a listen. Uh, I kind of started on it. It sounds pretty decent, but, you know, I don't know if I'm going to do album reviews here, but I'll, I'll let you know what I think of it. Random Access Memories by Daft Punk. Uh, there was a short amount of time where I was into this. I am, if there's two kinds of music I hate in the world, one is reggae, I'm sorry, and the other is disco, I'm also sorry. And uh, this is kind of disco-y, so I was, like, not really feeling it. Although Get Lucky, obviously, is just a ridiculous song. So good. And there are some really good songs on here. Like, uh, I think it's called, like, Giorgio or Giorgino or something. And this guy is, like, rambling about his music career and how he used to, like, show up and, you know, hang out in his car around the venue instead of, like, going home. And then, you know, years later, he's still making music. And uh, so that's a pretty cool song. I like that one. Um but it didn't really stick with me, although I know that, like, obviously it was a huge critical su- su- success. I hate people. I hate when people say success. Why do you, what? Why are you saying that? It's success. It's a hard C, people, okay? Um, so I do, I kind of think, let me see what the other guys on here are. Um, uh, good Kid, Mad City. I think they have a really good chance to get Album of the Year just because they're Daft Punk, obviously. They've been around forever, and then now they're back with their big you know, their big hit. But Good Kid, Mad City was a ridiculous album from Kendrick Lamar. Love Kendrick Lamar. He's the man. And uh, 
I think what he's doing is awesome. Bringing bring the storytelling back to hip hop a little bit. You know, me being a suburban white kid, I can only take the uh, the bitches and hoes songs for so long. You know, wall to the wall, whatever. You know, all the you know to the windows to the walls. I'm not really into that stuff um, too much. Although I do appreciate a good beat since I played drums primarily. And uh, so, you know, I'll listen to that, but, you know, lyrically, I want something more, and Kendrick definitely brings that to the table. And that song, production-wise, I mean, that album, production-wise, is also really good. I'm pretty sure Dr. Dre did a lot of that. Um, likewise, that Daft Punk album is really, really well-produced. If you listen to a lot of pop music that just dominates the uh, the airwaves out there, I don't know why, but uh, it's just really over-compressed and really... It sounds really loud almost, like in a bad way, like especially in dubstep and some of that stuff that's coming out now. Um, it's just like they just ramp up the volume so much that it almost sounds like distortion, like they're playing it through an amp or something, which I really don't like. And uh, Random Access Memories and uh, Good Kid, Mad City are, also, are both great examples of how production, good production, can benefit an album, I think. Uh, and then you have The Heist by Macklemore and Ryan Lewis. That's up for album of the year. I this really didn't hook me that much. I really liked thrift store and uh, same. Wait, thr is it thrift store or thrift shopping? I don't know. Whatever that song is, you know, popping tags. You know, what, what, what that song. Um, but the album, I just didn't. I wasn't coming back to that album for whatever reason. Um, and Red by Taylor Swift. I kind of missed the hype train on this because Taylor or I guess her label didn't want this on Spotify, and that's how I get all of my music. So I wasn't listening to it. And, you know, during the hype parade for Red, uh, I just wasn't in on it. I wasn't I wasn't marching in that parade, you know. I would have liked to have been, Taylor. I would have liked to have been. But, uh, you know, your stuff wasn't on Spotify. So now I listen to it like once or twice, and some good songs, but, you know, again... It, it hasn't been, it hasn't hooked me in. Although, um, I will say that I think by this point in the year, I'm just like burnt out on new music. Like I kind of just have been going back to old favorites. I've been listening to a lot of pop punk, which I grew up on. We'll get to the history of my music career at another time. But, uh, you know, I grew up on Blink, uh, New Found Glory, brand new, all that stuff that, uh, 13-year-old emo kids were were into back in the early 2000s, early November, incredible. Um, and I've kind of just been falling back to that recently, like in the past couple months, but there are some albums coming out that I'm looking forward to, which we'll get to in a minute. So that's best new album category. I am calling, I think, Random Access Memories by Daft Punk is going to win. We'll see if that happens. Uh, record of the Year, Get Lucky, Daft Punk and Pharrell, Radioactive, Imagine Dragons, Royals by Lord, Locked Out of Heaven, Bruno Mars, and Blurred Lines, Robin Thicke. Um, uh, Get Lucky, I already said that. That just that song is incredible. Radioactive is a really, really good song. Uh, I think it's overplayed to death, but, you know, as a song, it definitely stands on its own. Their second single, Demons. Not feeling it. I'm sorry, Imagine Dragons. I'll give you a shot. I'll listen to the album. But that's that second single, I mean, it, it moves units, but I'm just not anywhere in the ballpark for that, I guess, that demographic. I can see why people like it, you know, but I'm not into it. Um, what's up? Royals, Lord. I am such a fan of this song. It's ridiculous. I would not stop playing it when I came out. And um, my girlfriend was, like, all over my case because I just – I overplayed it for her, and now she doesn't like the song anymore, but whatever. It's a great song, and I'll keep listening to it. Locked Out of Heaven. Bruno Mars is a really, I think he's a really underrated songwriter. Like, as far as, if, if you talk to any, uh, I don't know, if you talk to any people who are into primarily pop punk like I am, and uh, that's my main, my main bag there, you know? My main little goodie bag. <laughs> um... You know, they might rip pop songwriters for, you know, they don't write their own songs, man. Just it's not pure. But, you know, I mean, do you really have to write the song in order for it to be good? Does the person singing the song have to write it? I don't really think so. Um, although there are definitely some pop stars out there that that put out some real garbage that, <laughs> that we'll also get to at some point on the cast here. The Truth Time, Tune Time podcast. Um, 
But yeah, I think Bruno Mars, back to my point, I think Bruno Mars is a really good songwriter. Uh, even if he's got people with him, I'm not really sure if he's got like a writing team, but a lot of the stuff that he puts out is really good. And he's really good at singing, obviously. Blurred Lines, um, I know there's a lot of controversy around this song because, you know, it's kind of like um, demeaning towards women and telling dudes to like, whatever, like not respect them or whatever. Um I mean, I think enough has been said on that. I don't really, like, I get it, but I don't really care. And I'll tell you why. Don't freak out. <laughs> but, but, like, it's a good song, period. Like, I'm not listening to a song like this for the message. And if you are, then, you know, that's kind of, I think that's kind of on you. You kind of have to have some responsibility as a listener. Here on this podcast, I'm going to teach you how to be a better music fan, okay? And number one is, okay, it's, it's fine to acknowledge that this song you know, does what it does and says what it says. And that's not a good thing. And we can talk about that. But despite that, it's still a catchy song to listen to. So why can't I listen to it? I can. And that's why I do listen to it frequently. Okay, that bass line, taking a walk with the bass line, all about it, you know. But uh, I don't know. I don't know if this is good. I don't know if that's going to win because it was a big smash. But I think with all the controversy around it, I don't know if it's going to if it's going to take take it to the bank there. And also, if you are concerned about this and that, I mean, I'm probably not the smartest person to be talking about this, but I'll give you my two cents since you're here. Uh, you know, if you're concerned about the message and you're concerned that like your kids are taking too much from this message, you know, why is this song raising your kids? That's what I'll say. Being a non-parent, obviously 25 year old right out of college, I'm going to critique your parenting, which is not a good, not a good look, but whatever. I don't care. Uh, and, you know, that, the same goes for, like, Miley Cyrus and all that that kind of um, stuff that blew up around that. Like, if you're looking at Miley – if your kid's looking at Miley Cyrus for a role model – Dr. Phil said this, okay? So it's not just me being ridiculous. If Miley Cyrus is your kid's role model, then you have bigger problems to worry about. You got to you gotta reel that in, okay? Maybe introduce them to some Taylor Swift. Um, song of the Year, Just Give Me a Reason – which is the Pink and Nate song, Nate Roos, from Fun, a.k.a. The Format, formerly The Format. Uh, I actually didn't realize that Pink was on the song uh, until recently. I thought it was, I don't know, what, I guess I thought it was Janelle Monet or something, but that's awesome that Pink is on there. She's, she's pretty rad, I think. And I like this song a lot. Um, I think it's a good pop song, but it's not, you know, it's, it's a little it's a little derivative of your common pop song, but at the same time, uh, I think the interlaying like harmonies and stuff like that really kind of put it in a different place from other pop songs. Although they do utter one of my dreaded cliche lyrical cliches, which is breaking, bending, and not breaking, or we're broken, we're not broken, just bent. Oh my god, can we just stop saying that? Like, how many more songs? How many more people have to be like, oh, this is the perfect way. This is a perfect way to explain how I feel is to say, I'm, I'm not broken, I'm just bent, or I haven't bent and break, you know, b- bending and breaking. Just stop saying it. Just stop, please. So that's how I feel about that. Locked Out of Heaven, another Bruno Mars there. Roar by Katy Perry. Oh, I can't even, I cringe when I hear this song. I'm sorry. I know why it's a hit, and I know why people like it, but this song is garbage. It is so terrible. Oh my, it, it all comes down, like, I'm all about the melody, and I'm all about the beats, you know, dropping the beats and the melody in there, and if you got that, then I'll listen to it, and, but, you know, if, you're, if your lyrics are as bad as this, as Roar is, then I just, I can't help you, I'm sorry, and I, like I said, I know there are people out there who love this, and it's empowering to them, makes them feel good, that's all great, but, you know, it's not for me, I'm not into it, um, when you're, as I like to say frequently in my own head, um, <laughs> If you're going to say, uh, what's the lyric where it's like, I went from zero to my own hero. The only time that zero to hero is acceptable is in the song from Hercules, the Disney movie. Any other time, just don't say that. It's just done. Disney killed it with the song. Stop. with the And like, she, she uh, like stinging like a bee and floating like a butterfly. Like most of the people who listen to this song probably don't know what, what, quote that's actually from so i mean you know good on her for capitalizing i guess but that song oh my god oh, it's just terrible royals is also there i'm rooting for that and same love which is another jam that a lot of people are liking um oh 
going to call this song of the year is going to be, uh, you know what, I got to go. I think it's going to be Same Love because, you know, the good, the pro-equality message there, I think that's going to hook a lot of people. I'm, let me say that I don't know. <laughs> I'm really just talking shit here. I have no idea what I'm talking about. I don't know how Grammys are even scored. I don't know if it's mostly record sales. I think that's a big, huge chunk of it. Um, but you know, I don't think, I don't, I'm not sure if they'll look at something like same love and be like, well, this had, this had the message of the year and we have to promote that. I'm not really sure if they do that, but I hope it wins because that's a, that's a good thing. And it's a good song. Uh, people outside my apartment, you just got to shut up. I'm I'm doing something. Best new artist, James Blake. Um, I'm going to pass on that. I don't even know who he is, but I'll look it up later and maybe give you my thoughts. Kendrick, Kendrick Lamar, as I've said, great rapper. Uh, I think he brings brings the storytelling back to hip hop lyrically. He's ridiculous in a good way. Um, a lot of this stuff, I don't know. I just, I'm into it. I like it. At first, there were a couple of his songs like, uh, mm, actually, I don't know. I don't know the song I'm thinking of. Not Poetic Justice, but one of the ones where he sings a hook, like promise that you will sing about me, that hook. Um, I wasn't into that song too much because just the, the cadence that he has when he sings, it was kind of weird to me. It kind of sounded like he was holding his nose. But, and so like when that first, when that album first came out, I listened to a lot of uh, like Art of Peer Pressure, Money Trees, uh, Backseat Freestyle, kind of hung on those songs. And then as I wore them out, as I eventually do, because I never stop spinning good songs, um, I kind of dug into those those other cuts on the album and I kind of, I kind of got used to it, used to his cadence of singing. And then, and then I heard uh, love game, which is a song that he did with Eminem that's on Eminem's album. And he also sings a hook on that and he doesn't do that cadence thing. So I kind of concluded, and this is what you should do if you're a good music fan. Okay. You don't just dismiss the stuff that you don't like. Like, yeah, I talk a lot of shit on stuff, but I have my reasons to back it up. Okay. And I'm always willing to go back and listen and say, you know, maybe I should like this. Maybe there's a reason. Like if you if you comment on this video and share this video and you say, hey, you know, this is why I like Katy Perry's Roar and I think you should go and, and listen to it with that lens, then, you know, that's what I try and do. And that's what I would like you to do as a listener of this podcast. This is the message we're trying to get out, one of the messages we're trying to get out there. So got completely off topic again. Oh, yeah. So Kendrick's Cadence. Uh, he didn't do that in Love Game, his song with Eminem. Um, and then I, it kind of made me think, like, maybe there was a reason that he did that and he sang that way on his own album. You know, maybe he wasn't used to singing and he just did it, or maybe there was, like, a, a storytelling kind of reason behind it. So, you know, I went back to those songs, and I've, well, I've been going back to those songs, and I kind of just got used to it and got into those songs more. And now I appreciate that. So that's, you know, got to gotta grow your appreciation as a listener, okay, for stuff that you didn't before. Except when it's Roar by Katie Perry, because that song is uh, helpless. I can't help you there, Katie. Sorry. Um, best New Artist, Macklemore and Ryan Lewis are also up for it. Um, like I said, that, that album didn't really hooky. Hook, yeah, hooky. That, uh, you know, I stayed home from school and listened to that album and I couldn't get into it. No, uh, I wasn't really into that, that album. But, you know, I'll go back and probably try and go back and listen to it and read some reviews or something and see what see what the people are saying, see what Pitchfork is uh, complaining about or waxing so eloquently about uh, Casey Musgraves, who I just listened to today. She's kind of like an alt country, most I guess mostly country. Um, that's probably something that I'm going to like, but I haven't really dug in. This is a head scratcher here. Last artist, let less nominate artist for best new artist, Ed Sheeran. I love Ed Sheeran. I think he's a prodigy, to be honest. I will stand by that statement. Um, but best new artist, I think his album came out either in 2011 or 2012. And I just don't get it. Like this isn't, this isn't an issue with the, with the pick, you know, quality wise, because I think Ed Sheeran should win this, this award. I think he's incredible. Uh, I think it's going to be a toss up between he and Kendrick for me. Uh, Ryan Macklemore and Ryan Lewis might be in there too for the popular vote, but um, if I had to pick, I would pick Ed Sheeran. But like I said, his album came out. It it wasn't definitely wasn't 2013, so I don't know how they pick these. Like I said, I don't really know anything about what I'm talking about, but I appreciate you listening and watching and learning with me. Um, 
So I don't know how they pick that. If it's like I, I was trying to read up on it, and the the closest thing I could get was uh, Gaga was up for a award for her single one year, and then her full length wasn't out. So then she released a full length, and some weird rule where like. Her single was out and she was nominated, so then she couldn't be nominated for the full length or something like that. And then they changed it because they were like, "Oh, that's stupid." Obviously, but this still doesn't make sense. And I don't think it, I don't think it's a good look on the Grammys' part. Okay, you're a big you're a big association here. Okay, I'm just I'm maybe maybe I'm asking too much, but you know I would like to know why uh, Ed Sheeran is nominated for Best New Artist. Not that I disagree with it. Like I said, I think it's I think he should win. But it just doesn't make sense to me seeing that and knowing that his album didn't come out this year. So, I don't know. I just don't get it. But I hope he wins because I think he's incredible. And take this to the bank. I'll also stand by this statement. I think in 10 to 15 years, we're going to be talking about Ed Sheeran shows the way that people talk about Bruce Springsteen shows right now. Three and a half long... uh, Three and a half hour long marathon sets of just pure ridiculousness and talent, this kid, he's going places. If you've never seen him, you got to look it up because he's got his acoustic guitar, he's got a loop pedal, and that's pretty much all he's got. And he's got a loop for his microphone. So he makes beats with his mouth, he makes beats on the guitar, loops it, plays the song along with it. And, uh, you know, I know he, he kind of gets lumped into this category with like One Direction and, um, you know, these pop sensations just because it's like a fandom culture for him. I think there's a lot of crossover in uh in the fans for whatever reason but he's not oh hello he's not writing bad like crappy pop songs he, i'm pretty sure he writes all of his own own songs like 100 percent of his own songs i haven't seen him co-write anything except with uh you know he's been featured with taylor swift and which that's a pretty good song and the lupe song um but he writes all his own stuff and he's ridiculously talented so keep an eye on him i think i mean he's definitely blowing up but even after even even if all the uh, the the pop sensation stuff goes away, I think we'll be talking about him for a long time. Hopefully, uh, let me see. Do I want to talk about the rest of this stuff here? This is what happens when you don't plan. You just go off the rails. You know, people don't want to listen to that. Yeah, I do want to talk about this. Okay, best pop solo performance. We have Brave by Sarah Bareilles. Again, great song. Royals by Lord. You know, I'm into it. Uh, when I was your man, Bruno Mars. I haven't. I don't think I really spent too much time on that album, so I'm not sure. Roar by Katy Perry. Yeah, you can just crumble that up and throw it away. And this this guy, he's just an ageless wonder here. Justin Timberlake, oh my God, he's so good, right? He's so good. Get out of here. If you're sitting there saying he's not good, get out. Turn this off right now. Oh my God, he's amazing. Uh, he's up for Mirrors, which is an amazing song that I also played to death. Couldn't stop singing it. Great jam. And what I like about Justin is... What don't I like about Justin? No, he's he's just a great performer and he he's talented. He's not just he's not just in there recording and then they fix up his tracks and it sounds great. You know he can hit all those notes. It's like Beyonce. You know she can sing and you know that she's talented and you know that he can sing and that he's talented. And when he puts on a show, he's not just like dancing like this boy band stuff that he used to do back in the day. Okay. He puts on he he merges all his songs together. Uh, like he did at the VMAs, that was ridiculous, and he dances all over the place, does all this crazy dance moves, I mean, it's just like the consummate performer in Justin Timberlake, so that's why I'm a big JT fan, and I think he's also nominated Push Your Love Girl is, is up for some award, which was one of my best song, favorite songs of the year, personally, when I say, when I say these things that I say, okay, keep in mind, this is all my opinion, I'm not here, I'm not here to, to judge, yes I am, but I'm not here. <laughs> I'm not here to. Uh, what do I want to say here? You know, I'm not. I'm not really a qualified source to say. Oh well, you know, Justin Timberlake draws on the mid '50s and early '60s of the contemporary movement. No, all that crap. Get that out of here. I don't care. Okay, it just sounds good to me, and that's why I listen to it. That's why I like it. That's why I like most of the stuff I like. Uh, you know, if I can make the connection historically, if I'm like, ah, oh, you know, that's a little bit, a little bluesy, and I'm into that. That's good, but you know, number one has to be, does it sound good to me? That is how you should be as a music fan, I think, and that's how I am. Um, so what else? What were we at? Pop, pop solo performance. Yeah. So I think, uh, I think that Royals might, Royals or Mirrors will take this. Hopefully, I kind of want, 
I definitely want Lord to win a Grammy, but I would like JT to get some, uh, you know, some some metal. What are, what are they made out of? That was some bronze. Whatever the award is made out of, he should get it. He should get the award at some point. Um, I don't know. I don't know how much more I want to go through this through these guys. You know, it's just it's just so much. And a lot of it, I the, the stuff I wanted to touch on, I touched upon. Upon. Oh, no. You know what? I will say, here's the best rap performance right here, if you're following along. Scroll down a little bit here. Started from the bottom by Drake. Um, Drake, what are you doing? You didn't start from the bottom, okay? You're an actor. What is that? You don't see you don't see Donald Glover coming off a of community, being Childish Gambino, and be like, yeah, man, oh, man, I started in the, uh, in the break room at SNL writing. You know, make a hook out of that. I don't know if he started there, but you, you get the point here. I just don't get it. Uh, and I don't, I'm not on the Drake train here. Um, maybe it just hasn't clicked for me, but the whole like emo rapper, I haven't been able to make that connection yet, but I probably should go back and listen to it because if, if, if I can tap into that, obviously I'm an emo kid at heart from the, uh, early two thousands, early November, taking back Sunday stuff. But, uh, you know, I'd like to check that out, but I ha and like I said, it hasn't grabbed me. We got Berserk by Eminem on here, which is a great song. Uh, I would have rather seen um, Rap God on here by Eminem, which is just a ridiculous display of skill and talent. Uh, if you haven't heard that song, go listen to it after you are done watching and listening to this. It's bonkers. He just goes off and just doesn't take a breath. It's insane. Tom Ford by Jay-Z, which I don't want to listen to because I don't want to hear about rich people talking about the stuff they have while my 98 Camry uh, needs an oil change and I can't afford it. Uh, <laughs> Swimming Pools by Kendrick Lamar. That is an, I love that song. Great song. Uh, and Thrift Shop. That's what, it's not thrift shopping or store. It's Thrift Shop. I'm an idiot. That is an, also uh, a big banger there. A good, and I like that one too. You know, I, like I said when I was talking about Kendrick and and uh, his lyricism, and also you can you can put this on the list with Eminem's lyricism, uh, especially in his new album. Um, <clears throat> I'm I'm tired of rappers telling me what they own. Okay, what they own? Oh, I don't even know. Sorry, just hitting puberty here on the Truth Time Tune Time cast. Uh, no. I'm a little sick here, so, you know, forgive me if my voice gives out. But, you know, I'm over rappers telling me telling me how poor I am. I'm over listening to people tell me how poor I am. Okay, I'm already reminded of that with my Charlie Bowen Christmas tree over here, which you can't see. But maybe we'll give you a look at it. Okay, with my busted 98 Camry out there. Okay, sitting there. I don't want to hear about your Tom Ford. Okay, JC? I don't want to hear about it. And I get it. Okay, you got the money. You don't have anything else to rap about, right? Because you've done it all. And that's good. That's good for you, but it's just not for me, okay? It's not not what I want to listen to. But, you know, some people like it, and some people respect that, and I think maybe with time, I'll come around to that album, uh, Magna Carta, Holy Grail, right? I think that's called. Um, <clears throat> but right now, like, a lot of the songs were just, like, it was just really, like, him talking about buying fine art and stuff and Tom Ford, which is apparently a really expensive clothing brand, if you don't know. Um, and I'm just not... Just not about that, dude. Not about it. So, who do I hope wins? Um, I kind of want Kendrick to win, but also uh, I want Eminem to win a Grammy at some point. So maybe we'll, we'll put him in on there. Best rap album, Drake, nothing but the same. Magna Carta, Holy Grail, Jay-Z. Good Kid, Mad City, Kendrick Lamar, The Heist, Macklemore and Ryan Lewis, Yeezus, Kanye West. We're going to have to do a Kanye West cast here and uh, talk about Everything Kanye West, uh, I think he's very interesting, and I know he draws a lot of different opinions on different people, uh, so we'll get into that later, but uh, best rap album, I think Yeezus might win this. Uh, I kind of want Good Kid Mad City, too, because I there were some songs on Yeezus that I really, really liked, and then other stuff, I was just like, what is this? Like, I didn't really get how... Like, if you go back and listen to some other artists, like, this dude Saul Williams was kind of doing, like, grungy, uh, trash can type beats, that, and that's not a that's not a diss, but it just, you know, a really distorted kind of beats 
uh, a couple years ago. Excuse me. And um, I feel like everyone's like, oh, it's so revolutionary when, I mean, I think we'll look back and say like, this is Kanye really brought this into the mainstream, but to say he was the first one doing it, I don't really agree with that. Although I do like Kanye and I respect him. And like I said, we'll cover that on another uh, another podcast episode because I know he draws a lot of differing opinions, which can be interesting. Um, and those are my Grammy picks. Those are really, I mean, I'll be honest with you. I'm not going to go through all of these on Grammy day and be like, oh man, uh, who won the Christian music song? You know, I don't really care. Uh, <laughs> and I kind of just care about what I just talked about. So let me just give, give a quick glance on here. Uh, country song, Taylor Swift is up for this. I really like Taylor Swift. I think she's, uh, she's really good. I, I like how she writes her own stuff. You know, she co-writes a lot of it, but I know she got her start, or she co-writes some of it now, but I know she writes the majority of it. She got her start, you know, writing for other people and, like, writing stories growing up, and I think that's really awesome. And I think she's really talented, and if you don't like her, then I don't know what's wrong with you, you know? Although I do stand by my statement that, uh, I've noticed a few times that she she claims Nashville when she's really from small town Pennsylvania, and uh, you know I don't get it. I don't know why she does that. You know you got to know your roots. That's fine if you love Nashville. Nashville is an awesome city, but you know you also got to know where you came from. But I can relate. You know if you don't if you're not into it and you want to distance yourself a little bit, you know do what you got to do. You do you, girl. You know what I'm saying. You got to do you, boo boo. I hate when people say that. You do you. Is that like an insult now? Or do people actually mean it? I never know. When people are saying it to me. I don't know. So that's uh, that's the Grammy roundup here. Um, also want to want to touch upon here. Black Friday just happened. Got a lot of sweet deals on a lot of stuff. I uh, want to show you some of it. I will say Amazon had a sweet deal. They had tons of vinyl for under $20. I had to res- restrain myself. I only got a couple things. Um, I also got a bunch of other deals. I strongly encourage you shopping on Black Friday. Would like to note that I'm not I'm not going to go to the store, okay? I don't want to get trampled. Who wants to get trampled? Nobody does. It's but, you know, it's like a tradition for me to buy a lot of stuff on Black Friday, which is probably not the best tradition to have, but you know, got to get the Christmas gifts in there for other people. You got to get your own stuff, you know, some stuff you've been wanting on that deep discount tip. You know what I'm saying? Um, That's why I like Black Friday. And here's what I got from Amazon. I would like to talk to you a little bit about some of this stuff. Uh, Okay, so I got I got these three vinyls. This is what I could get myself to uh, muster the courage to buy. Take it back Sunday. Tell all your friends. Classic. And if you're if you're uh, if you're watching the audio, I am holding these up. So I guess there's the uh, little video bit there. You get a little visual here, you, you know the nice cover here, and then you got you got the back right there. Okay, good stuff. Uh, the soundtrack to many sobbing nights in my bedroom as a teenager. No, that's not true. I was pretty happy, but great album, you know. And I, I no, we'll have to get into my music history. Uh, on another time. I don't want to ruin my credibility with all my weird pseudo punk kid stories where I wasn't really a punk kid, but, uh, they're pretty interesting. Uh, good news for people who love bad news, Modest Mouse. Shout out to my man, Dan Miller for putting me onto Modest Mouse. Uh, I actually thought Modest Mouse were one hit wonders until I really dug into them in college. And I'm really glad I did. This album is incredible. Um, and thank you, Dan Miller for, you know, constantly singing Modest Mouse out loud and uh, forcing me to, to listen. And also, I want to know, I don't know if you can see this, but right here, there's a corner right here, a little bent from Amazon. Not too pleased with it. This is brand new. This is sealed. And the packaging isn't dam- wasn't damaged or anything, like the cardboard that, uh, that came with it there. But, um, you know, that was, it, it's a little bent. And I'll, I, I've said to some of my friends, like, would you take this back? Would you return it? Let me know if you would return this in the comments below. If you're listening to the audio, go look at the video, please. Okay? It's a little bent right here. It kind of just looks like if you kind of just, it got smushed somewhere. Maybe if it got smushed a little bit. 
and it's a subtle bend, but you know, if I'm paying for something new, you got to get, you got to make it new, you know, Amazon, but you know, by and large, I do, I appreciate Amazon and what they do and I like it and I will continue to shop there. Here is the Holy Grail, a legendary album, if you ask me, Blink-182, Buddha. I think this might have been their first official full length on a label, Kung Fu Records, um, the sound quality to this isn't really that good. It's kind of like garage quality, but I just had to have it, you know, for my collection. And, uh, you know, I, I mean, all the songs are really good and I'll listen to them, but you know, that sound, the, the, uh, early nineties garage sound is there, which is, I can, I think it's kind of charming personally. I think it's a little charming for that nineties garage sound, you know, uh, <laughs> Also on Black Friday, I forgot that I bought this, and it came in the mail. So I'm going to include it. The Room's Too Cold reissue, early November, one of my favorite bands. Uh, South Jersey represent. Let me see if I can get this out of here to show you the color real quick. I'm all about the colored vinyl, and you should be too if you're a vinyl collector. What's the point of black? All of these, all these three, they're black, and that's fine because I really wanted those albums. But if I could have picked, I would have picked color. So here, we got this blue and green swirl. This blue and green swirl here, looking real good. And they say there's a clear swirl, but it's real subtle. You know, it's a real subtle swirl with the clear there. But, oh man, this is so good. I love this. I'm so, this is like Christmas for me when I get stuff like this, you know. You look at the color. I'll have to show you some. I want to do, do some vinyl viewings here. That's what we're calling it. There we go. Vinyl viewings. Part of the uh, Truth Time, Tune Time podcast. Thank you. This was the first vinyl viewing by me, Sam Christie, a.k.a. Sam with Glasses. Truth Time, Tune Time podcast, video cast. Um, but yeah, I want to show some, show off some of my vinyl just because, uh, and don't hate me for saying this, but I don't own a record player <laughs> right now. Um, uh, I do have one at home in, in PA, in Pennsylvania. I'm originally from Pennsylvania, living in San Diego, sunny San Diego, California. Loving it. Um, but I have a record player there, and I haven't bought one yet because we don't have a lot of space in this apartment. I'll have to do a little walkthrough for you of the space in this apartment um, because there isn't any for a record player. Okay, where am I going to put it? I don't know. But if I could if I could get one, I would get one of those ones that opens up. You know, I think most of them probably open up, but that, that opens up and has a little spot, a little square spot for you to put the album there so you can display it. You know, I see a lot of my friends on Instagram posting that stuff and I'm a little jelly of it, a little jealous. I just kind of post post my own pics of uh, the cases there, which is good. You can follow me on Instagram if you want, at Sam Christie. Same Twitter handle as well. Um, I'll, have to, I'll have to hook you up. I'll hook you up. I'll do that for you since we're friends here. I'll let you know on my URLs at the end of the PCAST, the podcast. Uh, another thing I want to touch on here. What albums are out? What albums are coming out? I am a huge fan of Spotify. I love Spotify. I think it's great. And I know I'm also an artist performing under the name Sam with Glasses. But uh, I am going to put my new EP on Spotify. And I'll tell you why. First off, because for me, um, it's about the discovery. Okay? I'm not like this household name yet. Yet. But, um, you know, I want people to be able to find my tunes, okay? I don't want them to have to pay to listen. Me, personally, that's my goal there, is to get the exposure out there. So I want that on Spotify. I know there's a lot of artist um, conversations that can be had about royalties and all that stuff. Um, you know, if, if you're streaming, if you're an artist streaming, like, millions of, uh, millions of songs a month or a week or whatever, whatever kind of numbers you're putting up, you're going to make a sizable chunk of income off of that. But, you know, for indie artists, um, you're not really making that that much. And for me, as an artist, I have to say, uh, right now, you know, I'm not trying to make a ton of cash off my music initially. You know, like I said, I'm not established. I haven't started playing live shows yet, and we'll get to why that is at another time. Maybe in a little bit we'll do that. Actually, yeah, let's talk about that in a little bit. Um, but, you know, it's not a goal for me right now to make money off of the music. The goal for me is to get the exposure. So that's why I like Spotify. And as a consumer, you know, I I just want the music. I want it all there. And that's why I was disappointed when Red by Taylor, my girl Tay, uh, wasn't on Spotify. Because, you know, that's, 
I understand that you're holding it and you want to make that coin, you know, you got to make that money in that first week or put up those numbers or whatever. Um, but, you know, uh, that doesn't matter to me as a music listener. I just want it all there. Because honestly, who has the time to buy a CD anymore and put it in your computer and rip it to your computer? Then what? Then you just got this disc. What are you going to do with the disc? The only time I buy a CD, I would buy a CD if there was like a cool box set or, you know, like a cool box set or a cool, you know, album art, some kind of pack-in. But, I mean, I don't want the CD. I just want, I don't even want the files, you know? You know what I'm saying? I want that file space. That's what I want. I want more space on my phone, and I don't want it for hundreds of dollars, Apple, okay? 32 gigabyte iPhone, $300? Are you kidding me? No, that's actually, I think that's actually a good investment. Because, you know, you get you get a lot of mileage out of your phones if you treat them right. Not like these these millennials today throwing their phones around, acting like goof goofballs. Uh, I don't, I don't remember the last time I said goofball. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> we're getting off track here. Uh, let's get back on track. Album's coming out. Uh, hopefully today is when we'll po- post it. I'm hoping that this is out on Tuesday. I think it will be. Um, so what albums are out today? December 10th. Um, I'm just going to go off of what, I mean, there's some, I'm looking at the Metacritic announcements, actually, uh, upcoming releases, if you want to follow along. Um, I don't think it's the most reliable source because there is some other stuff like music that I'm into, like pop punk that kind of gets glossed over here, which is why I check out propertyofzack.com. Awesome website, uh, for all your pop punk and, you know, scene news. Is that still a word? I don't know. Anyway, album's out today, December 10th. Childish Gambino, Because the Internet. I haven't listened to the leak of this, but I'm pretty pumped about it. And R. Kelly, Black Panties. (laughs) Which uh, I'm pretty sure I I read a Rolling Stone article about this album and it's supposed to be insanely sexual, which is awesome for R. Kelly. Um, I just think he's a ridiculously talented singer, and if you're not putting the soul in there for the ladies, you know, then you're wasting your talent. I think uh, "Trapped in the Closet" is one of the great <laughs> underappreciated musical uh, achievements of our time. Like to be able to to be able to harness your uh, your command over melody and songwriting and storytelling even if it gets a little ridiculous you know you got to be able to laugh at yourself you know like i do every day when i look in the mirror and then i cry (laughs) Uh, hopefully some people laughed at that or i'm gonna feel like an idiot i don't care um because the internet childish gambino i'm pretty pumped about this i really like uh camp his his debut I'm all about uh, Bonfire, that song. Uh, if you want to check out my other videos, eventually on this channel, I'm going to do more. I have I had a previous channel where I before I changed my name where I did cover songs, drum mostly drum covers. I want to get into other covers, but I want to do a drum cover of uh, Bonfire by Childish Gambino. That's going to be pretty rad. Um, but yeah, I haven't really read too much on this because I don't want to spoil it. I think it's going to be an album that... I can sit down and like experience, you know, just have the full album experience. You know, it's really you just gotta it's just a concept piece of an hour long music that just you really ties you in. If you're recording an hour long album in this day and age as an artist, I mean I I guess I respect that, but I mean don't expect me to listen to the whole thing. But I probably will. You know, I got a lot I got some time on my hands to listen to, you know, throw it on when I'm when I'm doing something, you know, and I uh, just go to town. But yeah, and I heard uh, that there was a leak of, I forget what the song was called from Because the Internet, uh, I'll post the alt press link in the description of this video, and I'll also post that Amazon link to the albums under 20 in case that deal is still going on. Um, but this leak, or there, or there was a song that leaked and he was kind of upset about it and he was tweeting about it, you know, ang- angrily on Twitter, and I think it was alt press, this kid uh, or a guy, I guess, a blogger from Alt Press, you know, was saying that he wouldn't be surprised if it was part of a stunt to be like this big internet, like, you know, he was mad about it, but then it was just an act because, uh, it's called because the internet and the internet forced him to leak this song or something. I don't really buy that. I don't think it's part of the shtick. I think if you're an artist and you have a plan like that, um, for me, my, my personal opinion, I would think that artists would, you know, I if you don't want a song, if you want a song to leak, I think that you're going to just put it out and, and have it leak and be like, well, here it is. Tell me what you think. 
you know, uh, I mean, if he's, if he's going along with the charade, you know, whatever, that's we'll we'll find out. I'm actually interested to see how that plays out, um, and see, you know, if, if that is the case, I could see him doing like a video, mo- not a montage, but like, a, what, what's the word I'm looking for? This is, this is the time when I wish I had a guest here or a co-host cause I'm just sitting in my apartment talking shit about nothing. <laughs> um, but I wouldn't be surprised if Donald Glover releases a Childish Gambino. Like, if this is all part of the marketing scheme, if it's, like, this big documentary type thing and, like, how how he went about all of it, which would be cool. I mean, I would definitely watch that. I would be into that. I'm into marketing and music marketing, and, uh, you know, that'd be pretty rad to check it out. So let me check how we are on time really quick. I probably should have kept the timer up here. Give me one second. Just imagine... You know, imagine you're on a beach and you're just listening to your favorite album. <laughs> no, okay, hold on. Got to make a note of that in the future. Don't let that happen again, and it won't. Because I rarely make the same mistake twice. That's my personal motto. No, it's not. If I, you know what? It's time for a little life lesson here, okay? Get it off the rails a little bit. This this will do you good. I had a conundrum here, personal conundrum, uh, recently. We're good on time, by the way. Don't worry about it. Thanks. I know you are, so don't worry. Um, and I, I went through this phase where I was like, you know, I need a life motto, <laughs> which sounds really ridiculous. But I was like, you know, I, need, I want something. I want something that's going to define me and define what I stand for. So I can be like, you know what? If I'm having a bad day, I can just look at that motto and be like, you know what? Boom. You know, and say the motto like, uh, like the grass is always greener, which I would never use because I hate cliches. And that's just, I, I, no, I'm not going to use it. But, you know, I would say, like, uh, like well, you know what? The grass is always greener. And then I just go and do it. Just go and stick the landing. You know what I'm saying? Just gotta, sometimes you just got to push through the adversity that you face, you know? And I thought a life motto would help me in doing that. So I was asking all these people, and uh, I was like, what, what should my life motto? I need a life motto, which is a weird thing to say to someone. I don't really recommend it. But if you have a close friend, you know, you can confide in them. That'd be good. So I found I found one, an anonymous quote, what I thought was anonymous. Um, no pressure, no diamonds, which was which is awesome. That's a really cool saying for me. Um, I still kind of believe that's a good uh, a good, you know, mantra to live by. And it worked for me because at the time I had this logo of like a diamond. And I was like, oh, man, this is so rad. Or no, maybe I thought of the logo afterwards. Anyway. Uh, I thought it was cool is the point I'm trying to make. And then I see this dude, RG3, if you don't know him, quarterback for the uh, Washington Redskins. Get out of here, RG3. And he has this Adidas shirt that says no pressure, no diamonds on it. And I, you know, long story short, uh, I thought the world was crashing down around me and I had just had to pick myself up, dust myself off. That's what you got to do. You know what I'm saying? Um, and I, I don't know if I have a life motto right now. I don't know. I'm just kind of rolling with it, you know? Maybe that's what it is. Roll with it. And do what you love and love what you do, you know? You got to you gotta uh, make your own opportunities sometimes. That's what I'm doing right here. Sitting in the living room, shooting the shit with a, random, a bunch of random uh, YouTubers, right? That's what you got to do. Just got to do it. Just do it. So, uh, as I said, I would like to ramp up the advice part of this podcast in the future. As I said, I work in the music tech industry for a music tech company. Um... And I've been in some pretty successful bands. I was in a band that played Bamboozle one year. I've played at House of Blues, Trocadero in Philly, um, you know, all over the place. Went on some mini tours and stuff like that. And obviously working in the industry, I've learned a lot. And I love nothing more than telling people what I think. So, match made in heaven. What do you got for me? You got any questions for me? Twitter doesn't have any questions for me. I appreciate all of you followers. Uh not giving me your questions, but I do have a question here from a friend of mine, a music-related question. So any anything you want to ask, it's really, I mean, I'm not going to judge you, okay? I've, I've been at, like, conferences and stuff like that where people will say, um, you know, that they'll ask, they'll ask questions that are, like, it's seemingly simple, like, how do I use Twitter, right? Or um, how do I use Facebook? Or like, what's the best strategy for this stuff? Um, 
I'm really into social media marketing, so feel free to ask me any of that stuff. But you know, it's stuff that you don't always know. And I've been there when you're trying to figure out the answer to what a lot of people think are a simple question. And it's not fun getting shot down and getting, you know, insulted just because you're not social media savvy or just because you don't know uh, what a lot of people think are the basics. So like I said, no question is too small. Get at me and I'll give you my opinion and uh, my thoughts. And if I don't know, then I'll point you in the right direction because we're about helping people here on the Truth Time, Tune Time podcast. So here's a question from my friend Anthony. Thank you for your question, Anthony, from Facebook. Um, I'll post some links on where to submit questions in a bit, but here it is. Uh, he says, I can write melodies. I can write lyrics. I have a hard time writing songs where the lyrics and melodies have contrasting lines. Uh, I think he means where like they don't match up very well. It's like I can write both of them separately, but I have a hard time merging the two into a song. Dissect that little conundrum. And I would be happy to, dis- to dissect this for you. Um, me personally, how do I go about writing songs? I, it, it kind of depends, but I think at, at the end of the day, if you have a melody and lyrics that you can't fit into each other, you got to pick one. Um, you got to pick one and kind of fit one into the other and start from there. Um, if the melody is really important to you, then, you know, maybe fit your words into the melody, um, chop and screw stuff, um, as you see fit. Uh, for me, I, I don't want to say I don't usually have that problem. Uh, I'm going to explain why, but, um, it's kind of like I'll, I'll just write free, like I'll freestyle write and just cram words in, you know? And then when it comes to the melody, I kind of just fit words, uh, as it, it's kind of become second nature. I, that, uh, cause I've done it for so long. So, I mean, it's definitely, um, I understand what you're saying, Anthony. And I think it's, it's, um, uh, a problem that you can overcome if you just pick one. Okay. What's more important, keeping the lyrics exactly how they are or keeping the melody. If you ask me, I say the melody should be, uh, should, should take precedence there because let me tell you why a lot of people. And I used to, I used to have this, um, I used to think this when I, when I would write poetry or lyrics or whatever, a lot of people think that like, if you write something, if you write lyrics and then you go to change that, it's like, no, I can't change it because this is how I felt and I can't change how I feel. But then I learned, I think, where did I learn this? I don't know. I'll have to figure it out and then I'll let you know. Um, you know, when you do that, when you go back and you edit and you make it better and you've really formed what you're trying to say, you're not changing how you feel, but you're changing, um, how you say how you feel. You're changing the words that describe how you feel. So maybe you'll find a way to describe them better or, you know, to, to make it better and change it. You know, don't, don't look at your lyrics as, um, impossible to change and don't think that you can't change them because you felt that way. You know, you can always, you can always say how you felt in a different way. Um, and I think that's what you can aim for. Um, if you're trying to fit lyrics into a melody, which is what I suggest you do. Also, secondly, um, keep in mind that you don't have to, if you have a melody, each note doesn't have to be one word. Uh, I don't know. I really don't know. Um, if you're having that problem, but you feel free to just mash in the words, um, as long as they fit in time with the song. Um, I found, I guess if I could take a stab at it, I would say I'm, I I feel comfortable doing that, like fitting lots of lyrics into a melody. Um, even if the melody doesn't seem like it can handle it because maybe because I'm a drummer and because I know how the time splits up. Um, I also listen to a lot of hip hop and if you listen to how they fit in words and kind of play, uh, like juggle their words and stuff like that, it's not like they're just like one, two, three, four, five, six, it's like, like they do all these, you know, rhythmic stuff with their words. So keep that in mind. Maybe go listen to some hip hop and, uh, keep your timing in mind too. You know, if you have four, four and you're like one, two, three, four, you can have the words be like one and two and three, but you don't, 
you know, you don't have to sync them up like that. You can, you can interplay them and use 16th notes and eighth notes. I don't want to get into, you know, all the music theory or anything like that, but basically you can fit it in and fit, fit in your pieces to the puzzle there to make it fit into the melody. Um, there was something else I wanted to say about that. Oh yeah. Okay. So go, here's your homework, Anthony. Uh, listen to, okay. So I'm going to bring up these songs that I talked about previously, previously, even if you don't like rap, listen to love game by Eminem featuring Kendrick Lamar and listen to rap God by Eminem, both lyrically, uh, first of all, really lyrically deep, which I really like about Eminem. Maybe we'll do an Eminem specific spoiler cast or whatever you, I don't even know what you call it. Um, but lyrically deep and lots of rhythmic interplay. It's not just straight words. Um, especially in Kendrick's verse. If you listen to any of Kendrick's songs, he does a lot of cool stuff with the rhythm in his lyrics and stuff like that. So I would say don't don't look at your melody and lyrics as immovable. Is that a is that a good word for that? No, it's not a good word for that. As uh as permanent. Don't look at your melody and lyrics as permanent. Pick one and try and fit one into the other. Remember, when you're writing lyrics and you want to go edit, you're not changing how you feel. You're just changing how you say what you feel. Uh, so don't worry about it and just go for it and listen to Love Game and Rap God by Eminem as your homework. And I think I think maybe we'll wrap it up right there for the first episode. Truth time, tune time. Appreciate it. I am... Sam Christie, a.k.a. Sam with Glasses, uh, a.k.a. Uh, Slamasaurus Rex, or no, Slamasaurus Flex, Samosaurus Rex. No, that's, uh, there's my wrestling names. <laughs> Not really. Uh, if you have a question for the advice portion of the podcast or you have something that you want me to talk about, you can email samwithglasses at gmail.com. Glasses. Glasses. Um... You can also go to samwithglasses.com slash Twitter and get at me on Twitter. That'll redirect to my Twitter. Uh, samwithglasses.com slash Facebook. That'll go to my Facebook page. You can give it a like. That's my artist page. That's my YouTube page. The band is the brand. It's all rolled into one, one nice little package for you. And uh, I think we're going to do this weekly. I think that's what we're going to try and do. If not, we'll go bi-weekly. And, uh, you know, we'll see you soon. Thanks for watching and listening.